Hey guys, it's Carolyn from Homesteading Family and welcome back to our series on household management and on managing a busy, active, maybe dirty, getting in the dirt and gardening and playing with animals, homesteading family and lifestyle. You know, we've talked about a lot of things over the last few months, including how to um, help your day start off to be more productive, how to encourage children to have a more productive day, We've covered things like chore times and um, making breakfasts and meals easier. But one thing that I keep getting questions on that I thought I'd go ahead and cover is laundry strategies. How to keep up with a busy family, maybe a family who's in the dirt pretty often, and keep up with the laundry. I think this is such a great topic and that's what we're going to be talking about today. Now, I think it's really important to mention at the beginning, your laundry program, your ideal laundry program is almost positively going to look different than mine. And this, the ideas that I'm presenting in these household management videos are not by any means the only way to do it or the right way to do it. But it's a way that has worked for me and I've developed over lots of years of lots of children and being really busy. And um, I would love to be able to share some of the things that work with me in case some of them can work for you or they can give you some ideas for what works for you. But don't feel like you need to adopt what I'm talking about. There's a lot of right ways to do this. Okay, so let's jump right in. Now, the number one problem that I have found as the backdrop to struggling with laundry is having too many clothes. In our culture, it's very easy to have too many clothes. Even in our large family, we'll get people bringing us hand-me-downs by the bag full from their family. And we really appreciate that because we always wanna make the best use of the resources that we have but it's also really easy to end up with too many clothes, especially in children's closets. And what ends up happening is it falls off the coat hanger or it comes out of the drawer and then it ends up getting stepped on and it ends up back in the laundry without even being worn. So years ago, I adopted a principle, especially for the younger children. Now, once you get into teenagers, they want a few more choices of clothes and that's just fine. We try to work with them in that. But especially with the younger children, we really try to limit the amount of clothing to about three to four play or work outfits, two outfits that are ready to go to town, a play outfit and a nicer, um, you know, go shopping with grandma and lunch type of outfit. And then an outfit that we call the church outfit, which is the outfit for any of the nicer events that we're going to go to. This just helps bring a lot of sanity to the laundry situation if all you have in ready grab for those younger children are three to four play outfits. Now that does mean you need to keep the laundry going throughout the week, but um, you know usually that's gonna reduce the amount of extra laundry that's getting done that doesn't really need to be done. Now, one thing I wanna point out on this is if you notice, I'm saying outfits not just some shirts and some pants, but actual outfits. Twice a year, I do what I call a clothing switch. Now, I do that a lot because we're in the far north of Idaho and our temperature and our weather in the summer is drastically different than our temperature in the winter. So in fall and spring, we change out clothing. Now the timing for uh, clothing changes might be different for you, but it works for us to do that about twice a year. We go through it every piece of clothing that everyone has out and we get back to that three to four play or work outfits. We go through any extra stored clothing that we have, which I keep extra clothing in big bins up in the attic space, um, sorted by age and sex so we can find what we're looking for. So we go through all of those things and we try to get back to three to four um, good quality, in good shape, cute, nice, handsome, whatever you want to call it, outfits that people love. And they do give them a lot of choice as they're picking out the out outfits as long as they're practical for what their use is. Um, but I make it a real point to keep those things as complete outfits. If they want to mix and match and swap later, that's fine, but they start with a whole outfit. That way I always know they have something to go along with those pants or with that skirt or with that shirt. 
Now, another thing that I found really, really helpful, we have six girls in the family, so there have been points where we have a lot of little girls, is wherever possible, I like one-piece dresses because then um, you don't have a shirt to find to go along with the bottoms, right? It just makes it that much easier. And of course, they're beautiful. They're very pretty. The girls love wearing them and they're very nicely modest most of the time. Um, let's see. So another thing that is really important when it comes to laundry is to designate a person and a time to once a day gather the laundry from throughout the house. So I have a laundry basket in the children's bathroom and I have a laundry basket in the adult bathroom. And all of the dirty laundry goes into those laundry baskets. Now there's some sort of um, chore time cleaning up your rooms that need to happen to make sure that's happening every day that the dirty laundry is getting to that basket. But then there's one poor person who every single morning goes through the house, gets all of the baskets. I also have a basket that's just off to the side of the kitchen because we use um, cloth instead of using paper towels. So we generate quite a bit of kitchen laundry also. And they go through all of those laundry baskets, get it down to the laundry space and get it sorted. Now that means that every day you know how much laundry you have in the house. So it's a lot easier to keep up with the laundry when you know what you currently have to do. Now, the second part of that is having somebody, it may be the same person. And if you don't have children who are doing laundry, this may all just be you, but it's important to put it into your daily schedule that at least once a day in the morning, you go down or one person knows it's their chore to go to the laundry area and to start a load of laundry. Now, this is just a really important thing. If you start one load of laundry every day, that right there, even for our large family with 12 people um, in the household right now, that keeps us at least at a baseline of keeping laundry done. At least we know that we're moving through it slowly. Now, it may not be enough, and there are days where we have to do two and maybe even three loads of laundry, but that keeps us moving forward all the time. If you're a smaller family, that may be all that you need to do to keep your laundry caught up. So you just need to get that on your everyday schedule to gather the laundry and to get a load started. Now, if you have a child doing it, I really, really recommend making sure that everything is labeled very clearly. I'm gonna be doing a follow-up video on this where I'm gonna actually show you my laundry set setup. It's not ideal, it's down in the basement, it's kind of dark, and I'm looking forward to the day that we can redo it and bring it up to the main floor. But for the moment, we're working with what we have, just like most of us have to do. But it's really important to have things really well labeled, especially in your sorting baskets. So for sorting, I've got a basket that's labeled towels. I have one that's labeled darks and one that's lights, one that's heavies for things like jeans and pants, and one that's delicates, which is where most of my clothing goes. Um, but then on the washing machine, I've actually taken some big duct tape, put it right on there and written how exactly you set up the washing machine to wash each of those types of baskets. That just makes it a lot easier as children are learning how to do laundry, which is a really important skill for them to know how to do before they come become adults. So make sure you're teaching your children how to do laundry. Um, now, I wanted to tell you about something that's worked really well for me. And I started this back when I had a few, um, like a four-year-old, a five-year-old, a couple toddlers and a baby. And I needed to get the laundry folded, but it often didn't work for me to, um, to be doing the folding because then the little kids, if I was trying to involve them, the littlest ones would be unfolding the laundry. So I found a way to make folding laundry, a fun family event that accomplished a few things. What I'd do is I'd take the laundry that we had and I'd dump it out onto the couch to be folded. Then I would sit in a chair right by and I would nurse the baby and I'd usually have the youngest toddler sitting right next to me practicing sitting still. 
and then I would get a really exciting or really funny child's book. And I would read to the children who were kind of folding, the best they could folding at those ages, and putting in piles of different people's clothing. It wasn't expected to be perfect, but at least it was getting sorted so then I could put the laundry away. And I would read as long as they were continuing to fold. Every time they would slow down or get distracted, I'd just quietly close the book and wait for them to wonder what was going to happen next in the book. And then they would realize, oh, mama's not going to read unless I'm folding. And they would jump back to folding laundry. It was a really good, no pressure way to make laundry folding fun while still keeping the little guys out of trouble at the same time. Then I could go and put all the piles of laundry away once it was done involving whoever could help to do it because I wanted them to learn how to put their own laundry away and care for their own laundry as soon as possible. So these are just some of the ideas that I have put into play for my laundry program here in the house. I always try to keep um, systems that are working well for the people in the home. And that's gonna be different if you have toddlers or little people versus if you have a bunch of adults or maybe you're just one or two adults living in the house. The important thing is, is to take a little bit of time to think about what your requirements are, what's working, what's not working, and put in the infrastructure and then the time built into your day in kind of that habit form where you're just getting it done. I find that first thing in the morning is great before we run out and do anything or the day gets busy with other things. Um, and then we try to go ahead and switch that laundry one time, get it out of the washer and into the dryer um, right after breakfast. And then at least the clothes are dry. Now, you know, maybe sometimes they sit in the dryer longer than would be ideal if we have a busy day, but at least the clothes are getting washed and they're getting dried. Okay, I hope that you found some of this helpful and keep an eye out for part two where we'll actually be looking at the laundry system that I have and um, walking you through the setup of it. Take care, you guys.